Welcome back. The market is steady as she goes. Absolutely no sign of volatility today. And that's uh, something of a bit of a novelty. We're very close to the highs of the session. There's been no selling at those higher levels, at least not as of now. Well, a uh, good time to bring in Satish Ramanathan, who is the CIO at JM Financial Asset Management. He's joining us on the show to talk about the approach to this market now. Uh, Satish, thanks for joining in, uh, speaking to you when the bulls are definitely in a very, very good mood today. And after a long time, right? It's been a trying market last uh, two odd months, uh, the start of this year and actually even 2022. So you tell us, uh, you know, what have you been f uh, buying in the fall, uh, if anything at all? And what's the preference, growth, value, uh, what, are, what are the bets that you're looking for uh, as the market goes through this consolidation phase? Yeah, we, we've been, uh, thanks for having me on board. Uh, thanks for that once again. And we've been growth oriented throughout this cycle because we believe that growth is the uh, way to go, uh, especially in a developing market like India. And uh, we uh, focus on companies that have uh, growth potential, and uh, we have stuck to that philosophy. Uh, as regards the market itself, it's been trying, yes, uh, primarily because of the uh, issues that we've seen in the West uh, and their ability to control inflation being challenged from time to time and uh, liquidity drying up. Fortunately for India, I think we have a strong savings pool and uh, money coming in from the domestic savers, which has actually kept the markets uh, far more robust than uh, other emerging markets. Mm. Uh, Satish, uh, morning. Thoughts on defense. We've seen a slew of order wins in the last couple of uh, you know days particularly. I think there is an ICICI security note where they say that in the past one week, the Ministry of Defense has placed orders worth 44,000 crore rupees, thus boosting India's indigenization efforts towards defense. And this has been ongoing for the last couple of months. It's just that it's picked up as the financial year comes to a close. Now, the question is, is there more upside in the stock? Because these defense stocks, the BELs, BDLs, Garden, uh, Garden uh, Reach, Shipyard, etc., they've been in an uptrend for the last one year or even more than that. So, um, is the best of the up move uh, behind us? Have the stocks priced in that for the next couple of years, these companies are going to see strong growth? I think the growth potential uh, is very much intact. Uh, as regards, certain stocks may have had reached a peak valuation and then cooled off subsequently. But uh, if I take a three to five year time frame, I think the growth potential is very much intact. The direction of the defense ministry is to localize, and which would mean that all of these companies benefit. And there are private sector participants also whom, uh, will, who will also benefit uh, just as much. So I think uh, apart from the pack on the PSU side, we will also see beneficiaries on the private side. Okay, got that. Satish, good morning and thanks for joining us. Are there any other sectors that you've identified which you, you know, feel now after this correction that you, we've just gotten feel perhaps uh, more reasonable and the valuation feel comfortable to you now? Are there any such sectors that you've uh, identified? I think uh, if you look at the recent correction on a three-month and a six-month basis, almost 40% of the market has corrected uh, about 10% or more. And that gives us an opportunity to actually pick up good quality stocks, meeting our philosophy and uh, 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 building up our portfolio. Now, uh, in terms of the stocks, we are uh, fairly stock specific and uh, not too much caught up on the sector. We find manufacturing actually doing reasonably well and it has played out through this crisis. Capacity utilization has gone up some of the uh, sectors like auto ancillaries are doing reasonably well and holding up. So we, we are looking at uh, sectors and companies where it's not really macro based or global based, but the outsourcing opportunity of India remains a very powerful theme. And we are focusing on those kind of companies uh, to grow. Okay, uh, you, so you've spoken about uh, the auto sector. I'm coming back to the original point where uh, sort of we started, and that's you said that you've been looking out for uh, building a more growth-oriented portfolio. So apart from auto, 
uh, what are the areas of the market, the pockets where uh, you find a lot of interest? And right now in the portfolio, what would be uh, the top holdings, at least in terms of just uh, a sectoral or, or thematic play if you can't talk stocks? So uh, we are slightly underweight on financials, uh, primarily because uh, we believe that there are better opportunities elsewhere. And what we have done is we have directed some of these uh, assets from financials into the manufacturing space. And it is across a slew of companies. Uh, we hold Bharat Forge, we hold uh, uh, you know, Larson and Tubro. So uh, uh, all our portfolios are uh, uh, public and we hold all of these names because we believe that their growth potential is uh, significant. Just a follow up, that, that's interesting. So you've diverted, uh, you know, some of the money from financial services to manufacturing. Uh, you mentioned two names, but you know, that's a pretty large uh, chunk, manufacturing as a whole. So again, what part of it are you looking at? Uh, capital goods, road companies, power, uh, if you could give us some more details. In general, what we have found from our research is that capital goods uh, are very ca uh, efficient and they actually generate a lot of free cash flows when the cycle turns for them. And uh, consequently, our preference is for cap goods. And uh, uh, valuations are running little ahead of the fundamentals. So uh, as and when we get better opportunities, we would be actually looking at those kind of businesses because uh, we are globally competitive, we have an export play and a domestic play all built in. Okay, got that. Satish, just one final question. Have you uh, looked at any of these new age companies and do you think that um, you know any of them seem attractive to you? So uh, the new age companies, uh, uh, what we believe is that uh, uh, as and when they do turn profitable and cash flow positive, they become very much viable and they uh, would be then evaluated on their merits and growth potential uh, as also their cash flows. Uh, as and when we see companies turning profitable, uh, we would uh, uh, look at it seriously. But uh, I, having said that, I think the growth opportunity in the new age companies cannot be challenged. We think that they do offer a very high growth potential. But it's just that they have to prove their profitability from time to time. And that's when we would actually be interested in looking at these businesses. Uh, we leave it to that, Satish. Thank you very much uh, for joining in. That's JM Financial for you. Get into a break. On the other side, we'll get you more on the markets.